Welcome back to Change Machine Labs. New year, new lab, new you. Same pandemic. Today's code drop is going to be focusing on lists and printing in Python 3. The drop is provided by replit.com at the address listed here at the top and in the description below. We're going to be using main.py so we can have other Python files in case there are other lessons we want to include using lists. Let's run the file and take a look at the code. There were no errors, so let's scroll up to the top and look at the first line of code after the comments, which is a print function. Remember, print is always a function in Python 3. Then we have some lists that we're creating. Lists are created with your variable name, equals, and then square brackets with your items inside, separated by commas. Lists can contain any type of object in Python, and can include multiple types within the same list. Underneath that, we have a couple of print functions, and here we're just passing in our variable name instead of a string. Below that is an example of printing a blank line to the console with just empty parentheses. Putting that all together, we have our section 1 up here, creating lists, represented right here with this set of code. Section number two is getting the length of a list, and we do that with the len function right here. And just like we were saving our list to a variable, we'll be saving this to a variable, list length. Then we have one new feature we're using in our print function here, where we're using not only the variable, but we're passing it a string as well, separated by a comma. This prints both of the objects with a space in between. The space is the default value, which you can change with more advanced options later on. In section 3 here, we're adding to our list using the append method. A method is a function that is built into an object. And here, we just do dot append and pass in our string mars to add to our name list. And similarly, we're going to add an age 33 into our age list. On line 36, I show a different way to print a new line, and this is with the new line character. In section 4, I'm using the zip function to zip both of our lists together, and then in a for loop, I am printing both the name and the age with is in between to show things like Bob is 72. And then at the end of our for loop, I'm using an else which will run through the entire for loop, and then once the for loop is done, it'll run the else statement, and that I'm just printing a new line. Section 5 is adding lists together. Here I'm creating two new lists, and I'm going to add them to our existing lists. I'm adding new names to our name list using our plus equals operator, and I'm adding our new ages to our age list using a dot extend method. On line 53, I'm showing off a feature not so much of the print function, but of strings themselves. And as you can see, I am making a simple string, just comma and space, and I'm using the dot join method, which every string has, and you can give it a list, and it'll combine the entire list together into a string using whatever you have as your main string in between. Looking at that will make section 6 a little easier, where we're looking at list comprehensions, which is only this part right here. The rest of it is being wrapped in that same print format we had on line 53. List comprehensions are read very similarly to for loops. You have a variable that represents each item in the list as you're going through the loop, which is, in this case, for age, in age list, where age list is our pre-existing list. And the one part that you add at the beginning of it is what you want added to the list for each iteration of this loop. And to make it a list comprehension, you add the square braces around the outside. Then we put it through that same format where we were using comma space as our string and joining that list together. And you can see right here Line 59 prints our ages as one line. In section 7, I'm going to be removing the last item from each list and saving it as a new variable by doing variable equals our list dot 
pop. The pop method is handy for not only removing the last item, but saving it as a variable so you can use it later. This next section is included not because it's something you should do, but it's something you should be familiar with. And you can cast objects to strings, and there are also things called wrappers, which can also be slightly different, but they return string representations of the object, which, in the case of lists, will return the wrapper for each object in the list, and the square braces around it to show that it's in a list. In this case, they're all strings, so it'll print in a fairly logical way, and it does slice off the square braces at the beginning and end, but depending on what type of objects these are in the middle, this doesn't give you any control of the formatting how you want to print it. So while this works, this isn't the way you want to print this. In section 8, we're taking our name and age variables that we popped off in section 7 and saved, and we're inserting them into the third spot in the list. And you have to remember that counting in programmer terms starts with zero. So putting it in the third spot is inserting it into the second index in the list, and then you give it the object using the insert method on the list itself. In section 9, we're removing the first item from the list, and we're doing this by returning to the pop method. We just similarly use the variable we want to save the object into equals our list dot pop, and we're passing in the index we want. And remember, counting in programmer terms starts with a zero, so we give it a zero, and name is now the first item in the list, and the first item is removed, and everything gets resorted accordingly. In section 10, we're adding that item we just popped off in section 9, and we're adding it to the second to last place in the list. And we do that by getting the length of the list and removing one from it, and then insert the item we want into it. And as you've probably noticed by now, I have included the way you shouldn't print this multiple times. And this isn't to confuse you, but it's to also show that you're going to see stuff like this in code bases all the time, and you can't let it get to you. You have to work with other programmers from other backgrounds. And for our last section, section 11, I'm returning back to slicing, and we're going through slicing lists. So similarly to other methods and things we've used, when you slice something, you can save that slice off as a new variable. And you slice something by having your list, and then in square brackets right after the list, you give your values. And it's two values separated with a colon. But if you don't include one of those values, say like this one has nothing at the beginning, it means everything from the beginning, everything on that side of the colon, up to the second term, which the second term is the length of the list, divided by 2 to get the first half. The reason why it has two lines here to divide is because we don't want to have a fraction. We want it to give us a whole number. Similarly, to get the last half of the list, we're going to take our list and then start with where we want to start our slice, which is halfway, the length of our list divided by 2 again with our special divider to give us a whole number for sure, and then the colon with nothing at the end, which says from that point all the way to the end of the list. The next entry here is just a reminder that getting the first entry in a list is the zero index, so getting the first is just name list and square brackets zero to get that item. To get the third item in the list then would be similarly the second index, you'd put a two in there. And then the last part here just shows an extra feature where if you give it a negative number, it will count your indexes from the end of the list. So you can use a negative one to get the last item in the list negative two to get the second to last item in the list, and so forth. And that looks like it concludes our short version of our introduction to lists and printing in Python 3. Thank you for joining in. I hope you found it informative, and if you did, feel free to like, share, donate, any and all of the above. It all helps. Thank you. Have a good day. Peace.